about Scotland where he, they've made 13 changes for their game with Romania. Great to see Ben Healy getting a start there. I don't know that we necessarily need to talk about the Romania, Romania game so much as maybe offer a bit of an overview of this upcoming Ireland game. It's going to be absolutely pivotal in the most interesting pool. I think it is understandable that a lot of people can expect Ireland to win this game or have expected all along that Ireland would win this game given both teams' recent records. I guess just the back of my mind, in the back of my mind, the concern is that I still see Scotland as a team who are capable of producing that sort of unexplainable, Celtic, guttural, refusal to roll over type of performance that they do maybe once or twice every six nations it doesn't typically amount to anything but just on their day they have a purple patch in them where they can hang with the best teams in the world and i actually thought against South africa we were about to see evidence of that just before half time where they gained the ascendancy a little bit even in the physicality stakes because we always viewed that battle as something where it's black and white and, and one team will win it and the other won't. But there are actually moments where you can gain ascendancy and moments where you relinquish it. And I thought half time came at the wrong time for them. I just think they're maybe a better team than some of us give them credit for. And like, maybe make no mistake about it, as I'm sure you would be able to contextualize. This is a massive challenge for Ireland, which is exactly how the players themselves will be viewing it, regardless of what fans think. Because Ireland have won eight in a row against them, it's easy to kind of start diminishing the effort and quality it actually took to win all eight of those games, including the most recent one, which famously had incredible circumstances with Ireland's injuries and, and still took some winning. And, and that shouldn't be underestimated. Listen, this Ireland team is a better team than Scotland. I don't think anyone can dispute that. The, the record the last two years shows it. But sport is a bizarre thing at times. And if Ireland have a, an off day and Scotland have one of their best days, they can absolutely beat them and put Ireland in a bit of trouble. Ireland could still top this group, we should say, if they lose with two bonus points. If they draw, they'll still top the group and go through. But that is not what you want, given what you've put together, given the 16-game running streak, given that you have a quarter final a week later and you just want to keep getting better, as I mentioned. And they have kind of done that through the three games so far. And, and maybe they had to slightly kind of peak for that South Africa and, and, and it declines a little bit. But I don't think they'll be thinking that way, particularly with a, a break weekend. The Scots' dangers are, the threats are really obvious. But you're right to flag the physicality because that's been part of their improvement this year. And the likes of Jamie Ritchie, George Turner have been more physical and uh, controlled in their aggression than ever before. It's not just flurries of it. Um, they're they're more consistent across 70, 80. And even with the box game, that took some winning. Like the box didn't steamroll them. They scored two tries in a really concerted period of, of excellence after halftime. They squeezed them and they, to me, never looked like actually losing the game, but it still took a lot of effort and nous to actually win it and not allow Scotland the opportunities that we know they're so lethal from. We saw it even in the first half where they create that brilliant opportunity. And Darcy Graham, he really should pass to Duane van der Merwe down the left-hand side, but he backs himself to score. And, and the Springboks need an incredible bit of scramble defence. There was another chance as well where, again, the, the box defence denied them when it looked like a guilt-edged try scoring chance. So Scotland have the capabilities of producing those, not even just moments, but those passages of attacking brilliance. And, and Russell, when he's on song, is, is outstanding. The box did a really good job on him, though, and that's worth noting. And last time Ireland played them, he didn't have a significant impact on the game. He went off injured, didn't he? So probably was carrying something. But the box brought out the worst side of him, I think, in terms of they pressured him, they consistently hit him after he passed the ball, they frustrated him. He arguably could have been yellow carded, probably could have been yellow carded for the, the charge on Arenza after he denied him that try scoring opportunity. And then the second try, I thought he overplayed his hand. He kept trying to get through around the Springboks defence in that middle third of the pitch near halfway line. They lost the momentum several times. And I know Ireland showed us that that doesn't mean you can't make a line break subsequently, but it was probably a time to kick the ball away and they get turned over. And, and that's on the game managers. It is their decision to keep playing there. Um, and, and the box forced them into a hole they didn't want to get into and, and they scored a try off the back of that. So... There's lessons in that for Ireland. They know that well, but when he's on song, when he's getting in between defenders and finding offloads, Russell is like no one else in the game and, and it's a joyous uh, thing to watch. So 
I don't think there's any chance that Ireland haven't got maximum respect for Scotland here. Everyone does respect them. They, I know they haven't won trophies and it's easy to slag them off and it's absolutely fun for Irish fans to do that and, and some in the media, but the team take this very seriously and their strength has been the fact that they never lose sight of the next game being the biggest one because if you look down the line, you just, you're just you you're selling yourself short for the game that's right in front of you. And Ireland, I don't think you need to be at 100% for this game. They, they don't. They can win it without being at their absolute peak. I don't think they're at their absolute peak for South Africa either. So they are deserved favourites, but you're right. There is danger in this game and the fact that Scotland are playing for their lives in the World Cup as complete underdogs. And you can see the mentality they've built. Um, Gregor Townsend said it last week. He was laughing about people talking about Ireland and New Zealand quarterfinals and, and the narrative that's built around that. So they've got a nice motivational edge. So... Ireland can glean from South Africa's victory over Scotland certain aspects of the game that they can apply and uh, look to beat Scotland in a similar way, perhaps. Flip that a little bit, and what can Scotland take from South Africa's performance against Ireland that would be replicable for them if they are to go on and do the unthinkable from an Irish perspective and upset the odds next week? You get in the air every single line out. And it's funny how that battle (laughs) goes because the first one doesn't go well for Ireland. And the box, they take a little bit of a punt. We we discussed the circumstances of that first line out, Steve, where the receiver joins at the front, kits off, and Malherb drops to the back. And and the timing is off, but it's done really well. It's hard to pick up live. And because the first one goes bad, it just unsettles the subsequent effort. So you would imagine there'd be elements of, of that really fighting hard to be because sometimes I think Scotland aren't the best decision makers around breakdown they can be a little bit um, over eager I think at times and waste bodies and and breakdowns defensively that they don't win and that's a recipe for disaster against Ireland you've got to have 13, 14 15 ideally on feet at all times to defend them because the, the attacking threats are so varied and because Ireland are so good at making decisions so I think those two areas are really key for for Scotland in limiting Ireland's uh, ability to be at their best. But then they have their own superpowers, and it is that wide, wide attack. And at times, it's there's a little bit of maybe naivety to it, but I don't mind them really slavishly adhering to their philosophy of going to width whenever they can, of passing the ball. At times, there's probably too much space between receivers and the ball's up in the air for for a long time, but that's how they... That's how they want to beat you. And uh, yeah, I think they'll stay true to that very much this weekend or ne- next weekend, rather. Yeah, we'll begin the build up proper on Monday for the 42 subscribers with Bernard Jackman. And yeah, it's going to be an absolutely cracking week between uh, Ireland and Scotland. And even some of the media stuff, I can imagine it getting a little bit more interesting than would be typical because the Scots have nothing to lose. They might as well have a bit of crack with this and try to apply pressure on Ireland that way. And they still. They like hate the Irish players, don't they? <laughs> they? There is that edge. I heard, I think it was John Barkley recently. I'm not sure he explicitly said it, but it's that they've always had to look at Irish players with European medals, Six Nations titles, and thought they're not that much better than them. We've been on Lions tours with them. I've seen these guys up close. We we have talent of that level. And of course, that's what they believe about themselves. They, they think they're every bit as good, but the record doesn't speak to that. It has created that bit of animosity I think it's not a outrageously violent rivalry or anything like that but there's been a nasty edge to it at times even Munster Glasgow and and how that went and as we say even though Ireland keep winning it's never anything but ferocious in this in this contest so yeah I do hope that everyone gets nice and chirpy in the press conferences this week it'll make it all the spicier and it was the build up to the box game it was fun wasn't it I mean I'm sure some people got sick of the 7-1 stuff by the end of the week but it was just nice to have that something different thrown in there and wondering what the spring box were up to and all the traffic lights and everything like that and giving out about them afterwards. It's really part of the fun. 